I guess we are live. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Aishman, for uh, being here, giving us your precious time. We know how busy you are. Why are you saying thank you for being here? You're in my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was going to that. Like, I wouldn't start with saying, oh, welcome to the show, because we're literally at Black Cat's office. Like, that's one of your companies. Uh, but yeah, thank you for your time. I know how, how busy you are. I've been meaning to have this one on one conversation for the longest, you know. We've been working with you for over uh, eight months now. But over I don't eight think. Months? Yeah, it's almost been eight wow. months. But we've never sat down and had like this one on one conversation. And I am literally privileged to be here, like without phones, without anything. I guess it was a trick to have sort of podcast <laughs> on. So you had like a one on one uh, interaction with me without any disturbances. Uh, so yeah, I mean, thank you for being here. Uh, I really, really want to know what being Aishwan Sena seems like. I mean, what, what do you, uh, like everything from the way you run your business, the way you live your life, how do you do the first thing when you wake up? I'm going to check my phone to see how many more emails do I need to respond to now. So I, I've got like this really bad OCD, where if there's a single unread message or there's a single unread email, I can't, uh, like, I just can't sit with it. So either I read it and do nothing about it, or I have to respond to it instantly. So at any point in the time, even if I wake, like now it's been very difficult for me that even when I wake up in the night to maybe go PM, make sure I don't see my phone because if I end up seeing my phone, I'll end up responding to 15 different conversations. <laughs> so first thing I do is check my phone, just make sure everything is all aligned and then get on with life. I know you sleep very less hours. Like there's been times when I'm at randomly waking up at 4.30 and I see, oh, Aishwan is a part of some clubhouse chat and then 8.30 is responding to emails. I'm like, how does this guy actually recover from like a day's worth of hard work? How how are you like, what's your coping mechanism in life in general? So earlier I would be really proud of the fact that, you know, I can go on all the time and have so much energy and I can like sleep three hours a night and still be ready to go the next day. Now I'm not all that proud of it. Uh, my girlfriend's helped me a lot in like just getting my routine back to normal. So now I'm able to sleep like a good five to six hours and I'm uh, very happy about that. I try to do at least six hours every day. But uh, I mean, the second I wake up, I, there's just so much that I want to do. Like even now when, and people keep telling me this, right? That you're doing four businesses. How do you manage blah, blah, blah. How are you able to give it time? I still want to do so much more. And like that thing that you want to do a lot more is a lot more driving than I think just physical fatigue or mental fatigue that the body can cause you. The want to do, to go like beyond uh, your current setup is probably what drives me more than anything else. I love everything I do. That's why, that's why I can do it without, that's why, that's why I'll sacrifice on sleep to do it. That's why I'll uh, sacrifice on a holiday to do it. That's why I'll make a lot of changes. It's not that I'm not comfortable in my current setup. Like I'm, it's not that I'm not making decent enough uh, money. Like I'm very vocal about the fact that I'm in a very, uh, healthy space right now where I don't really need to worry too much about growing wealth at this point. The only reason to do that is because I want to, I like, I genuinely enjoy doing more new things. Absolutely. Uh, I can imagine because I've literally followed your work for years. Uh, a lot of it sort of uh, by watching some of your interviews in the past, uh, me working at a talent agency back in the day, knowing what our competitors are up to and so on. I want to know, but from your own mouth, uh, probably where was the turning point where you decided you actually wanted to pursue artist management uh, or let's let's go back even further and sort of break down what you started as everyone knows uh, at some point in your life you were a club promoter right so how how did that happen how did that turn into artist management uh, you had a social media agency as well Have, how did everything come into play so i'll tell you one thing i've always like really enjoyed living life to like the fullest that's always been my thing like uh, for the past till two years back, I used to live hand to mouth on everything, like whatever money I would make, I would spend all of it on just having a good time because I really felt like that gave me a lot of happiness. And by having a good time, be it like partying, taking a vacation, buying something I really wanted, I would spend all of that money. Uh, but I come from a family where my parents, uh, though they like, I, I won't say I come from like a lot of struggle or anything of that sort, my parents did not give me anything. They, they don't, uh, they didn't like the fact that even I would even ask for uh any amount of money like for the longest time they thought that i was surviving my entire college journey on 150 rupees per day which was my allowance at that time so my thing came from a necessity where okay i know i want to do xyz things i know i want to spend extra that amount of money how do i make that money i have to make i have to literally go out and do something so that i get that money 
So this started in like the ninth and tenth grade when I actually started making fake IDs with one of my friends. So we had a lot of people who wanted to start going to clubs, who wanted to start going to bars at that time. Uh, I was very good at Microsoft Paint. I would make a fake ID, <laughs> go to a shop, get it laminated, fake the uh, college principal's signature, and start selling those IDs. So it started with that. That went into uh, understanding that the people who I sold these IDs to would now go to the club and spend another two thousand rupees just to get in. With no cover, with no benefit, because they were getting scammed at that time. So, like, why are these people getting scammed? Instead of charging them two grand, I can charge them five hundred bucks or one grand, and get them in at the same time. So, I called the club, fake that I'm like twenty three, twenty four years old. Uh, I want to get my own guest list. I'll get you fifty people on a Wednesday night, and getting fifty people on a Wednesday night for a nightclub was like, oh, uh, like it's great. So then, they, and I told them, what, they asked me, what do you want? Like, I just want you to give me a guest list. So it started with that. So when I was in the tenth grade, I would get in. Uh, like fifty to a hundred. Like I'm proudly the uh, the godfather of underage clubbing in this country. Bombay, <laughs> Bombay for country. sure. The country also expanded to Calcutta, expanded to Delhi. Oh, that's great. I had no idea yeah. about this. Uh, I, I told you I can't sit. I did something. <laughs> that's good. So a ripple effect. Yeah, it started with that. Then I got into concert ticketing. I realized this is like a lot of fun. So I started selling concert tickets. Even now, when I go to some place and if. Someone recognizes me. They come up to me and they're like, "You, you sold us that TS2 ticket at that time. Uh, I had bought this person's ticket." And now, like kids who had sold tickets to that time, I've obviously grown up now and are doing different works. So, like one of them was a photographer, and her name on my phone is saved as Juhu Justin Bieber. <laughs> so, uh, like I just did like a lot of ticketing, a lot of stuff in the entertainment field because that was really exciting to me. And that's where the stepping stone came from. The stepping stone came from the fact that I wanted to live a good life. To live that good life, I didn't have access to family funds to be able to do that, so I had to go out and earn that money. Like I had no option. Understood. That's actually a very. Uh, uh, I mean, I've heard this before, where people come from a very good background. Uh, in your case, I don't know about what your background is, but still, like because of not having access to the family funds that you're talking about, they end up doing, and that literally becomes their story. That turns into something. You start with the goal of uh, monetizing everything you're doing, but you end up. Eventually, finding what you truly love, and in your case, I'm assuming it's artist management that has like been your calling since forever. You would say. I I don't know if it's that, but I tell you, even artist management came out of a thing of wanting to live a better life. Like everything I do is to is to scale my lifestyle. I feel that's how I've at least till the past two years that was my goal. Now it's obviously changed a lot, and now I've matured down a lot, and now I know the things I want in my future, and I can like visualize them. But even artist management started for me when I started managing DJ Chetas. so like properly getting into that thing so he came to me and uh, he said that he's fired his manager i don't know what he saw in me and he was like you should start doing this to which i told him that you know i don't know anything about this it's going to be stupid and like how do i do it like how will i be able to deliver any value to you so he's like i'm not doing anything you're not doing anything you might as well get in word we'll see how it goes so i'm like okay fine let's see how that goes then he was like you know what i'm going to give you two bottles of alcohol at any club you tell me uh every month as your fee to manage me and once it goes better i'm going to give you a stipend as well so as a college kid in your second year i think or first year of college if someone tells you two bottles of alcohol at any club you want every month you you're, you're, you're king yeah you're the king selling so bottles on the biggest tables at like whatever clubs and no 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 tables only bottles so you get the bottles at the bar and you finish the But you're king if you get that. So I was like, I'm in. Like I got bottles, and I was like, you had me. That's type in my pen. Bar me, they're king. So I started with that. Tried to do things a little differently. Tried to just do things logically. Like how do we get him in front of more people? How do we scale the kind of shows he's doing? Uh, how do we make his shows more unique than that? How do we tell people that this show had happened and this is how much fun people had? So building after movies, etc. We did very basic stuff, which is now in hindsight like so easy to do. But just the fact that we were do able to do it in a thing uh, like the DJ space at that time, which was very like everyone shooting in the dark and trying to see where it is, uh, that ended up working for us. And because of that, artist management really picked up. Because then I realized that marketing is something I absolutely love. Music is something I absolutely love. Events is something I absolutely love. This is literally the culmination of these three coming together as a, as a space. So I think at some point you were starting a social media business as well, or. Uh, can you tell us about that? That's something I guess you skipped. While I had started, us. before I started working with Chetas, I was already running this one company called Hashtag Media Solutions. Okay, yeah. So out uh, there, we were handling a number of food and beverage outlets 
ka social media we were telling them that you know pay us a small amount we'll take care of your social media that time it was still new so they were like okay fine let's see if it works if it doesn't work they started seeing great results on that we ended up getting much bigger clients we got clients of a lot of scale uh we set up one of the biggest government accounts which i'm blocked by nd to talk about but uh all of these things ended up working really well for me at the same time chetas's career started exploding at the same time as i started working with lost stories uh at the same time arman reached out to me saying i want to work with you so then i had to put this on the side and like a shutting down i think the most difficult thing is to shut down a profitable cash cow business to focus on something else so that's when i decided that, you know let's take let's hit pause on this let me focus a little more on this and at some point in my life hopefully i'll be able to come back to marketing and that's why even black cap was born out of my I friends was exactly why i was wondering like why would you stop the business early on when you were pretty early in the process of yeah. starting a social media agency but a lot of your career trajectory from what i know is based on doing uh, being the first mover right like from being the first person to have an artist on a billboard at times square to being the f- uh, first indian artist uh, be on the dj mag or whatever like there are a lot of things that you sort of uh, globally figured okay these are the things that my artist or my client needs to do to be able to uh, gain like a larger recognition beyond what our country is already doing that is obviously one aspect of it second being uh, like you mentioned right there was just simple stuff back in the day that you were doing correctly that uh, i would say when till date a lot of things people just ignored like we were just talking about some conversations uh, being recorded uh, in a way which is not packaged and put out correctly compared to what's happening in the west so i mean i can totally understand where you come from when it comes to uh, poor packaging stuff that you're doing or uh, probably looking back where you shut down your business and moved on to artist management uh, trying to sort of uh identify what's going to grow further than what you're already doing but again years later you're black uh, you're back with the uh, black cab right i want to know more about that how did that come into the picture while your uh, successful artist management vertical or business is uh, moving forward so when you're young you're obviously trying to do as much as you can on your own you haven't learned how learned how to delegate you haven't learned how to like trust other people to do a certain thing so that's what i was trying to figure out for the longest time with artist management I had three great artists for like one and a half, two years. I managed them alone. There was no one else on my team. It was only later that I started hiring and hiring and building a much better team. When I was able to build a better team, I saw that their dependence of the business on me had reduced very significantly. Where I'm only required to strategize, there's hundreds of others who are there to execute. But I mean, for everyone, you have to go from that ground sort of thing, like the grassroots level, and then. sort of go up and reduce your sort of responsibilities so even now if you ask me anything about like an event or doing anything on ground or handling anything or taking care of any particular situation or even understanding production tech anything i've done the entire so like the entire journey which is why i'm a lot more knowledgeable than most other people who've just come in with capital and have sort of start, tried to scale an agency similar thing happened in the marketing side as well right i was the one who was writing the copy i was the one who was doing who was trying to figure out how to design the asset i was the one who was going on to posting it i was the one who was tracking and reporting it so once you've done everything yourself you just become so much more knowledgeable that once you are able to identify a team that you can trust and delegate in then you just need to oversee but at the same time you know that if something goes wrong tomorrow uh your technical knowledge and your know how can still compensate for all of that so i reached that part where i had become really comfortable with my team uh for artist management i would become you know like my artist didn't require as much time from me my team didn't require as much time from me and that's exactly when i figured that i really want to get back into artist management now i don't want to delay or uh, into marketing now i don't want to delay this any further uh luckily for me three of my best friends were already trying to figure it out they were already trying to figure out how to go about uh building an agency etc so rishi siddharth and ayush my three business partners and co-founders they were already working on black cap they had already tried they had hired their first designer already uh, they had already started working from a very small space in juhu so i told them that you know this is something i'm really keen about would you all be happy to work with me uh, they since they best friends they obviously didn't have an option to say no they had to <laughs> accept it so they agreed and that's when we decided that you know but again i can't see things on a smaller scale i have to see it reach a certain scale for it to make sense for it to really work out so then we decided and we i still remember we were sitting down in jubu and we made a list of every client who we want to uh, end up reaching out to who we have access to and who we want to get a meeting and pitch to 
what is where do we see ourselves going etc etc uh, so we like as a business owner what's the first thing you will do you will be very uh, safe about the amount of money you save you will be very uh, safe in the way you go about investing it you'll be very cautious about how you go on to build it till you don't have clients you won't take up a space till you don't have a team you know when to take up a space the first expense we did was literally build this entire office this is a very with zero cash is a very beautiful office so neatly done i love how forward the design is i know ayush's background in terms yeah. of design i know like a lot of his taste i can see here this is all ayush this okay, is cool. yeah. this is 100% ayush but like no other founder would probably go on to spend uh, a couple of double digit lakhs on building an office when you have zero <laughs> coming yeah. in as an income but we were sure that this is going to work so we were like we're going to take the plunge now and then whenever we're ready to scale we don't want it to be in a place where we don't have infrastructure to scale or we don't have the ability to do it because we were 100% sure that we're going to go out and close the business so then the list i told you about that we had made of uh, a number of clients today we work with about 80% of them already beyond That's just other people people who are working with so we were very i think it's just being confident about it and being able to add value was uh, something that worked for us and between the four of us our roles are very clearly divided so now i need to give time only to the roles that I'm committed to uh since your friends you obviously understand each other's shortcomings or uh anything else that's going to come up at any given point so if I'm going through something personally someone else is going through something personally we can cover up for each other and we can make up for it which I think in most other partnerships doesn't happen so easily so just because I found like the most comfortable partnership to enter into and the most comfortable partnership to scale like i would normally if i if i had to do this to someone else i would go to them and tell them that you know i have the capability to get you uh, x crores of business uh, on day one that's why i i, I need x y z business or anything these are my friends so that was like that entire thing of uh, i am adding x value was zero on day one at the end it was my friends skip and i would you point. skip directly to the point of wanting to just work with your friends and not getting into the unnecessary business jargon that sometimes comes Understood. Uh, as a package. Understood. Uh, one of the main things I want, sort of, uh, an issue I've been facing, where uh, like I was telling you, uh, I'm trying to scale my business. Uh, started uh, only a year and a half ago. Uh, the main issue is me personally being involved in a lot of things on a day-to-day basis, like the groundwork. Obviously, everyone needs to do the groundwork. Uh, but a, at what point do you have to sort of push yourself away from it? And b, how do you? uh how do you sort of recognize the people that you've onboarded as your team to be and acknowledge the fact that they will be able to do the i would i wouldn't say quality but at least the level of delivery that you can probably uh, come back with right for example if you're working with these a lister uh, or a list artists i'm sure at some uh, point there must be something you look at and be like okay this is not the way it should be done probably if i was involved so closely i would be able to deliver a better product or uh, even if it's like something at a very small scale or something at a large scale beat a show being booked beat or piece of social media post going out i'm sure a lot of times you have that so how do you li- really cope with that so honestly it's about first of all the point when you do this is when you start really looking out to scale and pulling out from your own business and being like i'm not going to give more time to regular execution is when you're ready to scale i think that was your first question about yeah. what when, when what is the right time to do it whenever you're ready to say that i want to now expand i want to now uh change the way i've been doing this so far that's when you uh really take this decision in terms of how did i pro- possibly uh go about making the other de- decisions that came with it uh it was mainly from the fact that one you need to understand where you add maximum value to any business you can say that i'm great at copywriting i'm great at uh even general posting execution i'm the best growth hacker i'm the best at performance marketing uh there's no one who does design better than me no one can handle a client better than me that's all theoretically great and you might be great at doing all of those things but it's better you focus on the one or two things that you are actually really really good at you focus on the one or two things where you can actually add more value versus focusing on everything else do those things where you add maximum value still as yourself don't don't give up on that don't try to let someone else get uh, involved in that process but everything else around it uh, which can be delegated which you feel others can add a lot more value to which you feel others will do a lot better uh, freely go ahead and do it and you have to take the risk at times you have to train people at times the problem is in our 
uh, in a service industry field of work, people forget the entire training part. You can't expect someone to come knowing everything from day one. Uh, you can't expect that to happen at all. Like, like, like there's a person called Ria who works with me at Represent right now. Ria manages our biggest artist in terms of his scale and the amount of work he does, which is Arman, because he's singing 14 different languages. There's probably one song of his that comes out every week. He's interfacing with three different music labels, and there's just so much work that goes into it. Ria is someone who's not done anything related to music before this. She was in a PR agency. She moved here. For us to assume that Ria would be great at uh, this on day one would have been absolutely stupid. But for us to understand that there's potential to train, develop, and groom someone into doing this, that's where the magic is. That's where you need to understand that people have that drive to learn. So despite not being from something like this at all, she was still able to sail through the entire process, understand the entire business. And obviously, if you're able to find people who are driven to learn more, it just becomes a lot easier. Look at Sanjana, for example, who you interface with from my team as well. She's incredible. She's just, I think, 19 or 20 years old right now. Hasn't done any of that. But right now, like even as an intern at Represent, she ends up doing more work than I think most of us out there. Just because of how driven she is, just because of how uh, hungry to learn she is about everything. So just finding people with the right mindset and then putting in that effort to really train them, explain everything to them uh, in a language that they're able to. They'll make mistakes once, they'll make mistakes twice. But after that, they're going to be able to get that right. And it's your job or your responsibility to give them that uh, space to grow and also put in that effort to train. Yeah, that, that was entirely uh, true and very important. Uh, I've, I have noticed where training uh, goes a long way. Just a few months of training can probably let you delegate uh, a part of your work to someone for the rest of the year. And then your involvement is so low. Sometimes it's also about perception, right? Like think I, what I feel is when I'm walking into a client's office, when I'm talking to them about something and pitching these larger ideas, and at the same time, they see me doing a lot of the work that probably could have been, uh, for example, social media posts, right? At one time, I, at one point, I'm pitching something which is supposed to be a larger video campaign. And at the second time, I'm physically, they see me involved in a, something as small as a social media post. How do you separate that perception and let them uh, value your understanding and your uh, uh, let them so, sort of value you as a person who can probably interact and can probably think at the level that they're thinking. So from a, and I'm guessing you're asking about this from a social media agency client yeah, yeah, very, very point of view versus more of an entertainment industry that's a lot different. But from a social media agency point of view, uh, at least the way we do it is uh, and I'll tell you one me personally, I'm involved at a pitching level. I'm involved in the first three months of getting a client afloat, uh, of getting them integrated into the system, of making sure the team that has been allocated to that client has understood the brief, is able to work on it, is able to build on it, is able to reach a point where they now work as a great functioning unit where no one has to really uh, get involved from a day-to-day -day basis. So for that, the first thing I do is I tell the client on day one itself that I'm not the person you, you are going to expect to be uh, involved every single day. If you have an escalation, there's an escalation chart. You call this person. If this person is not able to do it, you call that person. If that person is not able to do it, then you call me. But before that, if you're going to call me, I won't have any context because I haven't seen what has been happening for the longest time. And they respect that. They do understand that a lot of them still expect that uh, I'll be personally involved. But we make it very clear on day one that my amount of time on this project is probably going to be 10% of my uh, overall time. It's not going to be more than what I dedicate to that. Uh, the second is again, coming back to the team. You work with teams who are able to come up with better solutions. You work with teams who are able to understand or are very passionate about a particular project. So what we did at Black Tower was we realized that everyone uh, isn't passionate about music or everyone is not passionate about D2C or everyone is not passionate about like personal branding clients. To do that, we have understood our team a lot better. We understood their passion points and we broke them into different clusters. We put them into places where they already consume that particular product or that particular kind of music or that particular kind of content that is coming out from there. They are active users of these kind of things. And then when they go on to create ideas, it's always bet bigger and better than what even we could have thought of. So yes, there will be times where you feel you will be able to do it better. Or yes, there will be times where a client will tell you that you know, if you would have been involved, this could have been done 
in a much more different way but you always need to stand your ground and say that my team speaks for me if my team is saying this is the way to do it that's exactly how i feel this needs to be done as well if there are learnings where you think your team could have done better you give them that feedback you you again teach them fix fix any of the problems that come up but let them be your reflection it's always like a Abhishek Dwan can't be Dwan Media. It needs to be the team that is Dwan Media. Abhishek Dwan is just one of the members from that entire particular team. And so very, very well put. Uh, and uh, I mean, only the recent few months have given me clarity about the fact that you need to draw boundaries between yourself and your clients, and also the fact that uh, everything uh, at the end of the day relies on uh, overall teamwork, and it just can't be you being responsible for everything that goes down. Uh, apart from apart from like a very social media perspective i want to understand uh, you doing multiple things across uh, some being technical being involved with at a very publishing level or a revenue level with artists at the same time being involved with the creative uh, side of things also uh, how do you compartmentalize your mind like it must be going crazy at one point you're literally pitching this uh, let's say pitching a song to a certain label versus on the next day you're talking about a social media campaign for your artists or approving things or uh, like I'm, i don't know how involved you are in the process of booking shows but i'm sure at some point even that must be coming into place when you're talking about international shows like a tomorrow land or whoever like how do you maintain these relationships how do you compartmentalize everything that's there in your life so when it comes to booking shows and stuff that's something i've taken a complete complete halt from My common response to everyone is Nitin Prasad Vardhaman. If you want anything, you reach out to these three. I'm not. I myself. I keep telling. I keep lying to promoters saying I don't know what the rate is myself. So uh, you asking me to get you a discount or you asking me what it is? I want to know. I keep telling them that I don't know whether an artist is available. So it's best to start calling them. And I constantly re- repeat the same response over and over and over and over and over again, so that at one point they realize that okay, this guy is not going to. more we have to speak to the team and a lot of times people feel like you know if we speak to him maybe he'll do it for less or maybe something else will happen that is not the case my team decides what's going to happen i'm not involved in those processes uh when it comes to everything else i think the beauty of being like the part i love the most about myself is i'm able to wear both those hats at the same time so if there is a creative meeting going involved getting going on i can like while i'll have some creative input towards that at the same time i'm thinking of the business already which is where we're able to monetize better so for example when we have a song which is being made i'm already thinking of okay is there a brand that we can put in this video because this fits into the narrative a lot stronger when we're discussing with the label we're not talking just terms with the label we're telling the label that xyz things that an artist is doing is actually going to grow their market so much more so it makes more sense for you to invest higher into this project versus just looking at uh, as a single song or an album deal So I think that's the USP, or that's what I'm probably blessed with, where I'm able to wear both these uh, hats simultaneously, and I'm able to switch between uh, them and draw parallels between them as well. I think drawing those parallels is where uh, real monetization ends up happening. And at the end of the day, an artist or a creative are putting out content. Uh, they do obviously want it to do really well. They do obviously want it to reach out to as many people. but deep down they do wanted to monetize for them in some format or the other as well so you have to have that at the core of most of the work that you end up doing i won't say all of course but definitely most of it and what about the business side of things like how do you compartmentalize uh, your artist management versus your marketing agency versus uh, you are involved in a lot more businesses every week i hear about you starting either venture capital Uh, or uh, something to do with VR, AR, and I'm, I'm assuming next is going to be something to do with metaverse. How are you so like? I mean, it's like an overall uh, perception I have of you doing these multiple things, and under everything there are uh, like sub sub parts of it. Like art, there's artist management, uh, there's everything to do with music, there's marketing, there's everything to do uh, with even the Coca Cola you you guys are working at. I don't know in what capacity, but I'm assuming something to do with marketing. and at the same time there's like an entire part of your life let's say to do with venture capital or whatever that i'm not aware of so that's something i really want to know how firstly how are you managing and secondly just tell me about everything else you're doing on the side so any project i pick up or any business i start i'm very like i'm like 150% passionate about it first of all 
which is the only reason I go ahead to do it. On in a, on an average, I discuss maybe three to four business ideas. And first of all, I have a group of friends who are the most driven people I know, and they're all like I feel like they're all replicas of me, where they're all always looking at doing something new, doing something different, starting something new, starting something different. If you look at it, other than represent everything else is any other business I've gotten into is a partnership with some of my friends. So first of all, I love surrounding myself with people who have the same kind of drive, who have the same sort of vision to want to build multiple number of things. Uh, this with them and I'm bouncing off ideas every day. That's when we decide that okay, this is something we want to do. This is something we don't want to do. Blah blah blah. This is what we like. This is what we don't like. That's step one about just getting people who have a similar mindset who keep on helping you innovate better, who keep on pushing you to do a lot more, who keep on pushing you to do a lot better with just everything that you're doing. The second is building a brilliant team. If you have a team that can run businesses on autopilot, you don't need to get yourself as involved as you would imagine. Again, with something like artist management, since it's so personal, since it's an independent relationship with each and every artist, there's obviously a lot more involvement in represent versus any other business that I'm a part of. But that's something I signed up for. That's something I absolutely love. The artists I work with are some of my best friends. So even when I'm working with my artists, it doesn't feel like I'm working at that point because it's like I'm talking to my friend about what he wants to do next. I'm talking to my friend about how I can help him do something a lot better. So just that relationship doesn't feel like work. So it doesn't become taxing. It doesn't drain energy. When you're like, when you speak to one of your friends and you're just discussing work. That's that's not an energy draining conversation for you, right? Unless against when you're speaking to a brand and you're trying to uh, really dish out some kind of work with them. So just the energy in which you work with with different people, I think that uh, helps build a lot of things. And the third is finding the right co-founders across all of my businesses. I found the right partners, the right co-founders to who understand where my and I'm very clear about my contribution, whether it's from a creative point, whether it's from a business lens, whether it's just from a network lens, on day one I'm very clear that these are the things I'm going to bring to the table. This is how soon I can bring X, Y, Z things to the table, and this is where my involvement will have to stop. Beyond this, I'm not able to give more time to it. Uh, when they do understand that, when they are aligned with those kind of things, when they do agree to take up the rest of the work, only then do we go ahead to start more businesses. So even right now, when I'm involved in I think six different projects. Or six different businesses right now. I'm still looking at doing a lot more because I still feel I have a little more bandwidth and time. So I definitely look up to that. Uh, I want to do more, man. I want to do so much more. I'm not <laughs> even close to being like happy with where I am right now. There's so much more. That's I think a thing with like explore. overachievers or someone who has like an un unrealistically thing. high uh, expectations. Or I have zero right? expectations from any of these things that I'm doing. I'm just so excited about them. Tomorrow you'll come and tell me that, and this has happened thousand times, right? A content creator come and told me, why don't you start managing me? An actor of massive scale has told me, why don't you start managing me? Uh, certain brands have come to Black Cap and said, why don't you pick up our retainer? This is how much we want to spend and everything. If we don't like it, and like my finance team hates me because we've done it like twice now, <laughs> but we rejected big scale retainers where I've told artists I don't want to work with them, even though from a business point of view, they would have been a great uh, cash cow addition to have on our books. Uh, it's only when I'm really passionate and excited about something that uh, I really dive into it. I get pitched stuff left, right and center even right now when it comes to new businesses, new ideas from friends, from family, from just the general community. I started Angel Investing just some time back. So now my LinkedIn and email is filled with just pitch yeah, decks yeah. from different I can imagine. Uh, businesses trying to understand whether we can help them or not. But it's only when we're really passionate about something will I want to dive into it and dive into it deeply. And is it only the spectrum of entertainment, music, art? Not at all. It's the first time we're getting, like in this year, this is the first time getting into physical products. Oh. And getting into the entire manufacturing process, getting into all of that with detail. So that's what I'm most uh, like driven about right now. I've always wanted to have like physical product in the back of my car which I can stop the car, give it out to someone randomly for sampling, ask them how they felt about it, get their feedback. I've always wanted to do that. Uh, I've always wanted that physical presence. I've built a number of agencies. I've uh, worked on a lot of creating a lot of intangible value. I wanted to get into that physical space right now. And that's what I'm most excited about.
I know you're gonna kill it, man. Like there's no doubt. Uh, there's there's no you know there's that's no a, doubt. You know, that's you're involved part. in a business. If I was doing another agency and you would tell me I'm gonna kill it, I would probably believe you. Uh, when it comes to doing something which I which I have never done before, we marketed thousands of products. Like that's no uh, problem. But just learning everything about the manufacturing journey and how it's going to go. That's where it's going to be. I about. think talking about retail uh, supply chains, what something that must have been new to you, but everything else uh, being pushing the product out there, you have a wide network where you don't even need to sort of put a number or two of funds to back it. Like your network itself can push a product to like uh, literally a large scale. Uh, but yeah, I know. I mean, retail generally is a scalable uh, business, so uh, the numbers are much much higher compared to any agencies. So I know it could be, it can be a little challenging for you and what you're thinking about. Uh, but talking about scale, I want to understand, I read uh, uh, Ayush Pansal's post uh, recently on LinkedIn about how Black Caps done We've over, getting too many over 1 million uh, USD in revenue. Congratulations on that firstly. Uh, until uh, when I started this and uh, judging by every agency I've sort of been aware of, I never thought Revenue wise or even team wise, you all have about around 70 people working for you now at Black Cap. 60 to 70. 60 to 70. Yeah, Siddharth was telling me about it. And uh, I, did, I didn't know that it's possible for an agency to scale that quick. Like in India, if you look at the growth chart of the biggest agencies out there, there's an incubation period of about five to six years where they're grinding it out, they're building cash flow, they're building a capital. And then so, so either they get an investor on board and then scale uh, at some point also quality might go down, but then they just focused on growing the business bigger or other route where they're literally uh, going from point A to point B in a very in a manner where they're doing one thing at a time. They're either first focusing on building the teams, then they get office space, then they get a studio, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Black Cap's done it pretty quick in the last, in its first three years itself. And I want to know how did that happen? Was it planned? Was uh, Did you have forecasts when you guys started uh, doing the uh, like working on this business or did it just come into play as and when you started working on it? We always, uh... First of all, there have, there have been tons of agencies that have been able, I won't say tons, but there's been quite a few agencies that have been able to scale uh, at the same rate. I just think that there's, the space is so uh, great where if you do good work for you to be able to scale becomes a lot easier because you automatically get identified, right? Even right now in your agency, 80% uh, of your clients are be referral clients. I doubt you go out to uh, like open pitches where Companies are floated that they're looking for an agency. Then you go out, pitch, etc. I think that's fortunately not as many. That, Thanks to represent also being one where our work is being uh, sort of put into the spotlight by a lot of companies in the entertainment business. So I know what you're referring to. So you don't need to really go out and pitch, right? It's all coming to you because your work is great. Your work is speaking to you first, and then closing that client who's come to you because they've already liked your work is a ninety percent probability versus going into a pitch where there's thousands of other companies going in for it. It's not going to in, like it's. We've luckily won, I think, 95% of all pitches that we participated in, but that's still a lot more difficult process versus someone who comes to you as a referral. So the first foundation step was we wanted to focus on getting our work really solid. We wanted to make sure that we were able to do the right kind of things. Uh, we were able to work with the right clients. We were able to build the right case studies. That list I told you about a little while ago yeah. about that we had made a list of clients. I hadn't reached out to any of them till maybe a year or two back. Uh, till then we were just working on that's like a year and a half after the business has yeah. started we were wait waiting for just the processes to be set in we were waiting for just the team structure to be right we were waiting for everything in a way like we would even plan like and every month we do this that if we are to scale at x level how much lead time do we need to be able to sustain that scale because I don't want to go to a client and say that you know you can work with me but you can work with me after 45 days only so just getting those processes right understanding what is required to scale was step one. Step two, what worked for us in hindsight was COVID. We were hit by it very badly. Obviously, uh, we had to, uh, like a lot of clients told us that since they aren't being able to gen generate any sales, they don't want to work on anything right now. They wanted to hit pause on it. They didn't want to go ahead with it. Uh, we were able to take the burn for some time, but then we How were- How long was that period? It was like a four to five month period where people were just like, discontinuing retainers blah, blah, blah. and for a one one and a half year old agency you haven't built a cash reserve to be able to sustain that too long uh, especially after you spent all your money in building an office so uh, when this happened we were left with i think three months of burn 
we were sitting in that same conference room it, it was around june of june or not even june or june or july of the pandemic year and we were sitting and we were like okay it's three more months after that uh, let's start finding more people to share the office space let's start seeing uh, if we can downsize on the team let's cut on everything else we can't continue this way in three months we have to downsize in six months we have to shut down if it doesn't happen so we were like okay this is going to happen but then like it obviously your first ever uh for for me and even for like all my co-founders it was like a matter of pride that you know we can't let something that we built go down we had 20 people at that time working with us we were like how do we find jobs for 20 people uh, who are there so we had to had to had to amp this up in some way or the other we went berserk in developing business that time we reached out to everyone we told them you know do like a trial month with us and see how you feel about it uh, we asked our clients who were already staying back with us to go out and refer us to more of their people uh, the work started coming in slowly slowly we then decided okay fine this is coming how do we diversify we set up a production vertical we started focusing more on our influencer spends we started building performance marketing right into our business how do we end up we have these eight clients who are still sticking by us who are still promising to work with us how do we end up increasing their pie of revenue towards us without charging them more money so basically if they're spending on other agencies how can we go in and win those bids if they're doing something in house how can we convince them to do that with us we focused on all of those things while building systems to scale while building uh while developing more business while uh the four of us now for the first time were giving more than uh, 80% of our time only on this business because we didn't uh, have the team to be able to uh, like we hadn't hired right we had even downsized at that point so we were going up and taking up all the work we were handling all the posting again on our own we were literally building it up ground up to a point where it was then sustainable again it was then better and we sit one day and we are 50 employees and we are wondering how are we going to fit 50 <laughs> employees at this office and there's a new problem we've grown too much uh, in these three months where we were looking like we were going to shut down so the problems keep coming some of those problems are bad some of them make you laugh and wonder that how am i going to solve this but there's still going to be problems at every uh part of the journey T- till now we still have a problem but how are we going to like do we go in and invest in one more office do we take the the office right next to us uh do we we're still figuring out whether we want to work on a work from anywhere model so the funny part about entrepreneurship is even when things are going really well for you there's still a thousand other challenges that are thrown at you but uh yeah if, i mean if you're driven and you think you can solve for a problem then it's there's very little that can come in between you and that you just seem very excited about everything that's what i want to uh, want to been like sort of achieve for the longest i know uh, there's some there's something you need which is very innate to have the edge when you're doing business right like uh, talking about relationships for example you mentioned when it becomes work it's difficult to do but it's like as good as uh, managing a friendship but if i have to think from a very uh, again like from my personal perspective for me if talking to a client versus talking to a friend is an entirely different process uh, it's also because managing perceptions it's also managing uh, the kind of conversation or the way you're talking to them right like i'm sure the way you talk to a friend versus the way you talk to your uh, client is different too so to have that edge all the time and being able to be the most productive you can to close a pitch or to just to maintain like a regular relationship with client uh, you require that passion excitement and no, i'm telling you i don't try to be like <laughs> it's not like i'm trying to be a different person with a client or i'm trying to be uh different with anyone else it's it's exactly who i am like any client will see my conversation with the client is exactly how i would speak to one of my friends i tell them how if if i'm not available i'm not available. i tell them that it's my birthday i'm not going to be available for a week i'm going to be hung over as fuck <laughs> i don't have uh, the time to focus on this please give me this one week we'll come back to this whenever Uh, i can next so it's about just being upfront and transparent i think at this point a lot of the boundaries have sort of gone where uh, you need to deal with a client in a particular way you need to address them in a particular way you need to like we have a you i'm one of your clients have you ever felt that uh, i'm like you're my vendor and i'm your client no, i mean been, that something i want to point out definitely is that you're literally one of the chillest guy i know and it's never felt that way i think it it is an it is great to have that equation but at the same time don't you think a lot of times when you are putting yourself out there uh, 
like clients might be quick to sort of make a judgment of uh, how a person supposed to be like you working on entertainment versus you let's say uh, working on something more corporate like you working with a coca cola i'm sure you the people you're dealing with are so so prone to being uh, exposed to the kind of people who are used to behaving a certain way like being used to uh, greeted a certain way the way they probably might receive emails right so, so i'll tell that, you about coca cola for example mm-hmm. and emails and stuff is different right whenever i'm on email i'm super professional i love emails and there to the t uh you know for like consulting clients we have to build about a lot of decks reports etc those are done i'm not an, i'm not unprofessional in anything i do my method of doing that or my everything i do like if you look at it and you compare it to like someone who's probably done an mba and done the same thing you would probably see it very similar because i love learning more about how these corporate people end up doing their job right i love learning from them i love taking mm-hmm. things that they pick up on my favorite pastime right now is going through investor pitch decks and understanding how they have been modeling their business they were not trying to raise money in any of our businesses i still want to see that on a slide how is it going to like how does my business look on paper so like i love the professional side of everything and i'm a professional in every way when it comes to like timelines when it comes to deliveries etc i'm there on all of those things when it comes to my relationship with the client or when it comes even with the coca cola for example uh it's not how any other consultant or it's not how anyone else would have agency would have worked with them they now see me as a part of their team they now see me as someone who they can trust they now see me as someone who they can also call at 12:30 in the night if they need something solved urgently if it was a professional relationship they would think twice before making that call out here because they have a level of comfort and because i wanted to be very comfortable with the people i work with uh there's a certain leeway that makes things a lot easier and i think that comfort adds a lot of magic again it it might stretch timelines on both sides it might uh it might not f- openly look as the most professional way but at the end of it the output is absolutely better than what you had possibly expected and that's my case with every single client even at black cap at least the ones who i service or uh, even i represent even our consulting businesses that's exactly the way we do it i want people around me to be comfortable till they're not comfortable by comfortable i don't mean you will get drunk with me by comfortable i don't mean you need to call me bro by that i just want you to speak to me how you would speak to like another friend of yours or someone from your team or someone who you really enjoy working with i don't want you to uh change your outlook towards how you work with me for any reason so uh, you are like a people person in general that's something uh, i mean obviously you got to develop as a personality i had it like i said we unfortunately never had the chance to sit down and have this conversation my perspective in the last uh, however long it's been has changed about you because i always uh, perceived you differently from like i said uh, a lot of people try to portray this personality on social media of what they are versus what they are in reality is entirely different right so me even though after working with you talking about only like having very uh, small conversations over the last year and seeing something entirely different which is more uh, i would say like more excited on social media like that part of your personality i'd never gotten to see but now i know what you mean right uh like that's pretty incredible so even on social media like people tell me i'm trying uh, some people think i'm trying to show off some people <laughs> think i'm trying to flex certain <laughs> things i'm not i'm genuinely like so excited about all the work we do because we put in a lot of effort yeah that's that's exactly the right word projects, right? Yeah. we put in so much effort into all of these things that we do uh that i'm just excited to talk about it like for example uh even like the arman post we put up just a couple of days ago like i had all of those stats at the back of my head i didn't have to go back and refer to anything and that made me realize how much i love this project how much this project means to me so if i'm so excited about something i want to talk about it of course i want to talk about it i don't think there's anything wrong that's a given for sure that's not at all i mean, that's exactly what i was i was referring to right uh, a lot of times when people are trying to just be someone they're not and for you now like i've known that you are genuinely that excited but i didn't know that that excitement is what drove everything because a lot of the times being excited about something versus what we were talking about before this uh, conversation began that people don't end up doing it it's there you know you're excited about the idea but how do you go and push yourself to actually deliver in your case uh, even talking about you now managing your sleep better you managing your lifestyle but i guess you started working out recently i see your stories at the gym how's that going so apart from uh, everything that you're working on the business you're managing i'm sure in the last 2 years 
uh, one of the main things people have faced is uh, being able to navigate uh, navigate clearly through the chaos that is there right family members having covid something to do uh, like just there's just a lot happening right now uh, which is uh, difficult to process and at the same time uh, maintain the level of excitement or passion that you have for your work and sometimes you just have to take a back seat and sort of realize okay i am working so hard for something but uh, the future is so uncertain considering covid came out of nowhere no one would have expected it the last pandemic to happen was i guess 100 years ago uh, how do you balance your mental health what do you do what are your what is your coping mechanism and has it like taken a toll on you ever where you had to severely take a back seat and sort of uh, reevaluate everything you're doing in the way you're doing it so first of all friends and family obviously trump everything at any given point they are above any business they are above anything else you do you you do it cuz you would like you you have genuine love for them which is non transactional which is nothing else so if there's anything they are going through that obviously has a very strong ripple effect on you uh at that point i consciously try, try to slow down as much as possible to look into anything that's happening uh again the great part about working with people who treat you as a friend versus treat you uh as a client or a boss or a vendor or anything else uh is that they, then if you tell them that you know i need a personal day or i need a couple of days to just realign they understand that they respect that and they don't create any fuss or trouble and you can then patiently on your own uh with no sort of nothing going on in the back of your head take the time to recalibrate re- recoup and then go back into doing whatever you're doing to get back into the grind uh just like a month ago i had like a major fight with my girlfriend and i, I was like really upset over that whole thing uh i i didn't know what to do i was like really sad etc and this is peak december right in the middle of all See the shows you. happening and everything but then i still had to tell my team that i need uh, to tell my team i need two days i need to get my shit sorted if i end up i, I am in an entire like it's not that i can't cut turn up at work i can't do anything the decisions i make will not be the right decisions the way i work on things will not be done the right way so give me these two days let me sort my shit out and i'll come back and everyone respected that everyone understands that and they do it and it's not like you're doing this every day right? when you're particularly feeling in a particular way you should you should definitely hit pause solve for whatever you need to in your personal life and then come back to your professional life uh, in my case i'm a little lucky that i have businesses that run independent of me so it's not like the daily functioning is not working there might be things where i am required to add certain value those will be pushed by a couple of days but everything else is going like it is like the lights don't go down at any given point it's very commendable uh, to firstly accept the fact and acknowledge that you are never invincible and everyone goes through it because oh, i every I, single day i see a lot of people have that alpha personality being put out where uh, this is something to be totally ignored and they reach a point where they crash and burn out so it's uh, it truly is very important to sort of acknowledge it and uh, go past it to uh, go past it uh, i mean i had a very good time talking to you today just i want to close this conversation by understanding what's next for you uh, and when i say that i just don't mean business wise i want to know what are your personal goals uh, over the next few years or like what is something that's going to probably take uh, your life to the next level and what is going to excite you and keep this level of excitement that you had for your work or uh, for your life in general forever so for me there's a couple of things in terms of business uh there's a lot i want to do in both the venture capital space as well as in the physical product and manufacturing space so these two are something that i'm really uh excited on developing at the same time when it comes to representing black cab and radar i really want to scale these a little better by scaling these i don't mean adding more artists or adding more clients i want us to get into more depth of the various services that we offer how can we do that better I, i'm i'm happy with the current clientele i have at a representative black cab we can obviously do uh more but I, i want to be able to service them a lot better i want to be able to take care of everything that an artist needs and to and i want to be able to grow that consulting side that we worked so hard to build a lot more so just building stronger processes uh working day in and out with the team to sort of streamline a lot of things is where my focus is going to be across these businesses while i start building others on the personal front i think uh what i'm most excited about is finally being able to travel now 
so i'm looking forward to uh, going back to the us or sometime going to europe or sometime spending some time in london uh, where we had built such a great business relationships at the same time we had built so, like so many friendships memories etc so i'm really excited to go back into that phase uh, i'm now finally started to look into my own health so like you mentioned i started going to the gym which is something i've been trying to do for the longest time but now i'm finally doing it consistently i'm up every day doing it so which is working more on my own health making sure i'm i'm building for the future but making sure i'm going to be present in the future is what i'm doing right now so giving my sleep more time giving my body more rest spending a lot more time with friends not discussing work and just like regular banter versus always talking work 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 those are those are the key things uh where i'm really focused right now that's incredible it was lovely talking to you thank you so much again for your time i like i said i've been wanting to do this for the longest and finally got a chance to do it have like an entire deep dive into who you really are what how your mind works and uh, i guess i know how i can use this and everyone i'm going to put this out for can use this information to sh- shape and sort of uh create like a trajectory for themselves going forward so yeah thank you so much for your time awesome man thank you yeah.